Hey everyone, I've got a special guest with us today, Ben Franciacelli. He's a paleontologist from Australia and he's going to show us some of his best finds from 2022. Ben is a vertebrate paleontologist from Melbourne, Australia, where he's hunting for the remains of the biggest predators that have ever existed. From diving underwater, locating whale skulls, to launching expeditions in quarry that look like moonscapes. He's working with a group of incredible citizens and scientists to secure the material for the state collection. And he's also got a really awesome Instagram and YouTube account. Hi everybody, thanks Mornay for having me here today. My name is Ben, I'm a paleontologist from Melbourne and I've been looking at the fossil deposits in and around Melbourne for about the last decade. And in that time we've made some absolutely incredible discoveries, not just by myself but also with citizen scientists that I work with. And I have the absolute privilege to know these people and uh, they send me pictures of the things that they're able to find and everything we find, just like how you do as well, Mornay, is, you know, accessions into the state collections so that we can oh, study nice. them, so that scientists can get a really good understanding of how all of that works as well. And you're right, March is a little bit late <laughs> to be doing a recap, a Spotify recap, but yeah. it was a <laughs> tremendous year. Now, Mornay, you don't find many shark teeth, do you? Very rarely, and if I do find them, they they tiny, like microscopic. That's it's basically I find more shark teeth than I find anything else in the fossil deposits around the world. When you do so come jealous. down, I can guarantee you'll find like twenty or thirty in one day. Oh. It's not fair. Yeah, but you get you know complete specimens of penguins and stuff. That's yes, pretty that's outrageous. That's true. <laughs> So uh, in the image that you can see to the right there in the pink border, that's me holding up an ear bone that I found in 2020 last year and early 2020 that is of a, some kind of giant sperm whale. That was a particularly Ooh. exciting discovery. But let's get straight into it. So where did I find these fossils from? Well, there's a number of sites that I've had to look. There's two just around the corner from Melbourne, about 30 minutes outside of Melbourne, one at Black Rock, which has been nicknamed Site B, which we'll discuss a little later, and Bo Morris, which has been known of for a very long time, over 100 years, and we suspect that the indigenous people of the Boomerang Nation probably knew of the site as well. And then Jan Jack and the Great Ocean Road, one of the most scenic, beautiful places to look for fossils you could possibly ever go. The cliffs remind me of the Jurassic uh, cliffs that you can find in the UK. And then there's also a megafauna site that we checked out right at the end of the year, Gunner Matter and the Back Beach. It's really cool. So how many fossils did we find? Well, we found a hell of a lot. There was about 1,500 individual vertebrate fossils and over 1,300 of them were shark teeth, including Megalodon, um, the ancestor of the Great White, tiger sharks, you name it, basically every single shark that you can imagine we have found them uh, from all these different localities. So there's just a crazy amount of shark teeth that you can find. And it does make sense to find more shark teeth in the fossil record, which is quite shocking to me that you don't find much, Monet, mm. because sharks go through tens of thousands of teeth in a given lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Whereas something like a sperm whale will only get one set of teeth and they'll slowly add cementum to bulk yeah, up yeah. the actual tooth itself. First site is Black Rock. Now, we only announced to the public that this site even existed uh, late last year, in October last year. And we uh, basically described a couple of seal fossils for the very first time that I was able to find. But it is a remarkable site. I found it with the help of citizen scientists back in 2018. And we found hundreds upon hundreds of scientifically valuable specimens. But in order to find them, we've got to go diving. I have to hold my breath and sink to the bottom of the sea floor. So... 300 vertebrate fossils have been found from this site, and it is by far one of the most important marine fossil localities in all of Australia. And you can see exactly where it is to the right there. The first thing that we decided to describe were these bits of seal. And the seals that they represent, they're about 5 million years of age, they represent monk seals. And you might be familiar with the ones in Hawaii with the really big eyes they look very sad all the time sitting out by themselves on the sand sandy beaches of hawaii um, but they seem to have first evolved in australia which is really surprising and really cool so you can see a segment of jewel that i found back in 2019 and also a phalanx as well right at the bottom yeah sorry on that seal jewel what are the what are the parts of a seal jewel that can tell you the species uh all down to a type so usually it's this kind of rise to the back ends of the jaw just here so the tooth sockets i don't know if you can see my mouse can you see that on the yeah, screen yeah. 
Yeah, okay, it, yes. awesome. You can see the tooth sockets there. You can see the gracile nature of the of the jaw, but you can also see this section called the coronoid, which reaches up and goes up to a point. And also this area here called the masseteric fossa. They're really good diagnostic parts for understanding what kind of seals okay. they were in the past. So we are able to look at them. They look almost cool. identical to the monk seals that we have of today and very nice. different from the seals that we currently have in terms of the fur seal distribution in New Zealand and Australia. So... Well, we found yeah, some really cool stuff. Yeah, so you, this bit is really cool. So we had giant marsupials uh, that <laughs> lived all over Australia. The largest was called Diprotodon opatum that lived up until about 30 to 40,000 years ago. But we also had others called Zygomaturus. Um, they would have reached about 500 kilograms in weight. And their remains are excruciatingly rare all across Australia. So to find anything is really, really important. And especially from this site where they date back more than 5 million years of age. So I'm technically cheating because I found this on New Year's Day of 2023, <laughs> but I wanted to put it in. How did it get into that formation? Was it a marine formation? Did it do a, a what, a bloat and float? Or how did it get in there? I suspect. Yeah, it's a really good question and an answer we're still trying to come up with, but I suspect it was a bloat and float. The animal died, probably made its way down through a tributary or some kind of riverine area and then slowly sunk to the bottom of the seafloor. Um, papers detailing that with ankylosaurs have been uh, known in the literature before. So if it can happen with heavily armoured dinosaurs, who's to say that it couldn't happen to giant wombat-like creatures as well? Um, the second one was this incredible ear bones. Now, Mornay, do you find many ear bones at all? Yes. Yeah, I do find quite a few. Probably more ear bones than shark teeth <laughs> where I am. That's unbelievable. That's that's insane <laughs> to me because I wish it was the other way around because they're my favorite, favorite <laughs> thing to find in the fossil I, record because just one of these ear bones is just so wonderfully diagnostic. The, the only problem is the ones Sorry, I mate. find are in really big concretions. That, so you have to acid prep them out. They take ages to get out of there. Yeah. In most cases, when I find these ear bones, and this, this particular specimen was found by Barb Vey, an amazing citizen scientist. This was just loose, sitting on the bottom of the seafloor on top of the sand and didn't require any kind of mechanical prep in order to take it out. So it's, we're very lucky that we have the opportunity to, to do that, obviously. Um, but this ear bone is really important because it seems to represent one of the oldest occurrences of the modern group of uh, beaked whales known as Mesoplodon, which includes Blainville beaked whale. Uh, the, um, what is it called again? It's called uh, Mesoplodon denserostris because they have the densest bone ever recorded in the animal kingdom in the top part of their skull. And this ear bone is almost a dead match for that big twail and it's over five million years of age so a really cool find yeah. um there's also this really awesome specimen and the jury's still out on exactly what it represents but it's clearly a large oceanic dolphin and what's really intriguing is when the megalodon disappeared roughly three three and a half million years ago there's been no real reason for understanding why it disappeared at all but it's one of the theories about it is that maybe large orca-sized creatures evolved on the scene for the very first time and they outcompeted them well here we finally got evidence of large oceanic dolphins appearing in the fossil record for the first time from this site and it's it's a really awesome specimen and i'll show you how i found it so Mornay, when i head down there into the water i don't have tanks or anything i've just got gloves and you can see the gloves are all beaten up there's two of them <laughs> that i've fitted over the top of my hands and it's as simple as that that is so cool. <laughs> it is. And you probably did you hear my voice in yeah, the video yeah. as well? Yeah. <laughs> Shout of joy. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I recognized it as an oceanic dolphin, and I was like, "Yeah, delphinoid, fantastic!" Because so cool. of all the delphinoids that we found before, they were only small, like two meter long individuals. Mm -hmm. Nothing of that size at all. That, that's okay. Yeah, because that looks like. Uh, is that a periodic? Ear bone. It's not the buller. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, the internal uh, ear bone. Those and so it's early. quite a big one for a dolphin because the dolphin ones I've seen are tiny. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's not fair because baleen whales have got massive ones. Like blue whales have yeah. got ear bones that are almost twice the size of your fist when you hold it together. Yeah. But for even the really large toothed whales, like sperm whales, they have comparatively smaller ear bones. So. Mm -hmm. 
just because it's not as big as that doesn't mean that they weren't reaching those huge sizes okay. as well. And that was quite big for a dolphin-like creature like this. So this was another gorgeous tooth that I found of a smaller killer sperm whale. And it's just a really neat, complete specimen. You can see the gorgeous rippled enamel at the top of the crown there, the bitey part yeah, yeah. of the tooth. Um, this was another really cool find, a humerus from a penguin. And we suspected that they were at this site. <laughs> but we never found them. We couldn't explain why penguins didn't exist here, but we're down the road, three kilometers down the way at Beau Morris. And then finally, yeah, yeah. finally, we found it. And it was like a eureka moment. We're like, of course they were here. Where else would they have been <laughs> the whole time? I mean, it's, um, it's still a relatively large penguin, probably getting to a size mm. similar to like that of a king based on its humerus. So I can, t I can give you that much information. Cool. Um, we know that the material found at Beau Morris uh, represents a stem penguin lineage. So something that is not alive today and doesn't have any uh, descendants basically from what was once there five million years ago. Um, this doesn't look like much, but we had these fantastic ratfish called a daffodon that lived five to six million years ago. We do find their remains every now and again, but they're usually very incomplete. But this was a, uh, a partially complete portion of jaw segments from one of these uh, giant ratfish. And they probably got to the same size as a horse, about three meters in length, just absolutely huge. Um, go sharks are another name that they go by. And then we get down to Beau Morris, again, about five to six million years of age. That's an area that I go snorkeling at quite regularly. And again, amazing fossils to be found there. This was a very nondescript looking fossil. In fact, it kind of looks a little bit like a turd if you look at it yeah. in a different way. <laughs> um, but it seems to be part of a penguin skull. And there seems to be about 50% of it in there, but it's just covered with matrix and then yeah, being yeah. tossed around. And yeah. it's the important part of the skull, the back end of the skull which is oh. really awesome. So that was found by Barb and Elliot Vey earlier last year. There was this ear bone that I found on the bottom of the sea floor that made me very, very excited. Is it Leviathan, the giant killer sperm whale that haunts everyone's dreams with artillery sh shaped teeth? Uh, it could be, but as one has never been found before, it's still very hotly debated, as you can imagine. We need to find a complete skull associated with the ear bones before we can tell anymore. So this, this particular bone was quite exciting. We've got found a few of them and we've only nicknamed them something called the fatties, but they represent a completely new group of baleen whales that we haven't seen before in the fossil record. And they're really strange. And I absolutely that love is a weird finding looking them bone. to whenever we can find them. I mean, it doesn't even look like a bone. I mean, nah. it looks like a slab of meat that's undercooked, you know, <laughs> more than anything else. But you've got to love ear bones for the weird, wacky looking shape. Uh, we've also found a number of right whale inner ear bones known as the periodic, and it seems to suggest that there was an ancient breeding ground of these right whales in Beau Morris five to six million years ago. We seem to have all the entire growth series of them all the nice. way through, which is really awesome. Um, this was a pretty amazing find by Tom La, a nine-year-old boy. He sent me these pictures just uh, recently at the end of last year, and he said, man, what do you think these are? I could tell that it was a bird and it was a bird bone. It was a pretty robust bird at that. Mm -hmm. And I initially mistook it for one of those giant pseudo tooth birds known as the Pelagonithids. Wasn't that. Turns out it's probably the southernmost evidence of cassowaries in Australia, which is really, really awesome. Yeah. Just on the basis of this one single upper leg bone. But nine year old, how That's amazing so is cool. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, just absolutely outrageous stuff. There was this other segment of upper jaw. As you can see, it's missing all the teeth, but the remains of these giant marsupials called zygomaturines are still super rare in the fossil record. So any discovery is really important. That was made by Barb and Elliot Fay. They also made another really cool discovery. Turtles are not very well known in Australia. In fact, from the Cenozoic, from the last 66 million years in the fossil record, I could basically place every single fossil that we have of fossil turtles in my hand. That's how few. That's crazy. There are. And so this costal rib bone of a turtle uh, probably comes from the Peruvian species known as Pacific Elis, which is a really cool fossil to find. And uh, again, really, really rare. And it's because of these citizen scientists going out and making these discoveries that we even know of yeah. their existence at all. Do you have much to do with citizen science in terms of um, liaising with members of the public, Morno? Yes. So there's about, 
I would say there's about 10 fossil hunters I know going to the beaches I go to. And, you know, if we find something yeah. good, um, we, we can either contact the people at Canterbury Museum, uh, Otago University, Te Papa. So we've yeah. got, a, got a little network going on. And yeah. I know we found some pretty good things. There's between, I mean, there's Lee Love, who's finding new species after new species in the Waipara River. He's probably found, I don't know, like 12 or 13 birds, you know, the really old yeah. Eocene birds. So it's, it's crazy. Outrageous. He's doing a huge amount of work there. But then, uh, you know, the rest of us also, every now and again, we find something cool. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's, there's, that's amazing. There's, there's quite a good network, yeah. Yeah, um, it's tapping into that knowledge because I, I think of myself as a relatively decent, you know, person who can go and mm. find fossils in the field. But then there are some members of the public that are just insanely good at what they're yeah, able yeah, to yeah. do and they can make discoveries that i would not i would have walked out half the time they show me some of the footage that they collect on their gopros and i'm like i would not have seen that megalodon to in plain view, you know <laughs> one more yeah. story there's a guy in the north island called zane and he watched a couple of my videos and sent me an email saying hey i found this piece of bone sticking out of a cliff i took it out and it was a, a nice decent chunk and it's entire dolphin skull like even I could yeah. recognize it. <laughs> that is the most like, ridiculous thing. I was like, oh my goodness, that is crazy. And he found it, you know, and he's finding lots of good stuff there in the North Island. Um, right. you know, and I think he's sending it off to one of the museums, but yeah, it's incredible. That's fantastic to hear. Yeah. 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 That's 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 what needs to ha happen with all of these specimens. As soon as we mm -hmm. realize that they're of scientific interest. They need to make work. It's the only way in which we can really properly study them. As long as we know exactly yeah. where they are, we can always kind of make the science replicatable, as it were. Yes. Um, then we go to Jan Jack in the surrounds, which is along the surf coast, about an hour and a half outside of where Melbourne is in, uh, mm. in Victoria and in Southern Australia. And again, the most beautiful surroundings you'll ever see in your entire life. Like those cliffs. It, it looks it, yes. Yeah. Like 30, 40 <laughs> meters tall. Super dangerous stuff. Yeah. Uh, like cliff falls happen all the time so it's always mm. good to be aware of it but um as of maybe five years ago we weren't even aware of the existence of amber and now we have some and there's some pretty big chunks that have been found by Aiden that's and cool and Beer. Um, and we suspect some of them may even have some bio inclusions in them as well mm. real jurassic park yeah, yeah. kind of stuff that's which cool is just awesome. <laughs> yeah it's it's really cool it's going down there and finding it it's really difficult because it just looks like any other ordinary pebble yeah, in the yeah, shore yeah. platform it's only until you get a really good look at it and you have an idea of what these things look like that you go oh wow this is something different and again really important for paleoecology and understanding mm. what was going on throughout the time period there was also another group of whales called the eomysticetids they're the first true baleen whales that probably arrived on the scene some 27 to 30 million years ago and they had really straight narrow jaws and we don't really know how they were using them because when mm. you look at modern baleen whales today they all have bowed uh, jaws but yeah, they yeah. also had teeth sticking out of the ends of their tips have you ever found any of Mr. Cedar before no I don't think so yeah that's another one for you to find because they're wild looking things and I know New Zealand's quite famous for them also I, I think really Bobby Bosenacker he, he did some study yeah, yeah. on them for his PhD and he called them the surfboard whales because it looks like he could land them <laughs> as a surfboard <laughs> the skulls are really strange looking. Um, but then, of course, we have another whole bunch of weirder whales than that known as the Mammalodontids. These are a completely extinct group that of uh, baleen whales. And, of course, when you think of baleen whales today, they shouldn't have any teeth. Yeah. So to have, see one that has teeth is already really strange, but tried to be dolphins about 23 to 27 million years ago. So what on earth were they doing why did they die out we don't have much evidence for us that this gorgeous molar tooth was found by aiden and magnolia beer and again it's a really important specimen that they're able to find we also had evidence of giant penguins as well and this one here looks like the first evidence of uh kakaru i'm absolutely butchering the pronunciation in australia that was found by phil malaley but really cool metatarsis that he was able to procure mm. and find there just loose in the shingle really that's cool crazy stuff. kaikuru the one found down at otago i think so yeah okay. so i think 1.4 meters in height was 
the estimate for it there. So definitely comes under those that giant penguin umbrella there. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, first evidence of dugongids from this area as well. And this is the skull cap, the very top part of the skull of a dugong. And we just weren't expecting to find them in this area, which is really yeah. neat when you do find them. They, are, they have some really, like, you don't expect them to have tusks. And you look at their skull and stuff, but I would love to find a tusk one day. <laughs> Males have got really big ones. Um, and then the last place we're going to go is Gunnamassa on the Mornington Peninsula, about an hour outside of Melbourne. And good question as to its age. We're not entirely sure. It could be anywhere between 50 to 500,000 years of age. But just in one trip, we found two associated skeletons of what we suspect are giant kangaroos. Whether or not they represented short-faced kangaroos as the stenurines is very hard to tell. But over a two-meter space, there was all this white bone sticking out in the short platform, which is really cool. You can see in the top left hand one there, that little orange speck right in the middle next to the Sharpie probably represents a molar tooth of some kind, but it's been very well abraded by the water that comes over the yeah, yeah. top of it. So, but in, in extraordinarily dense sediments, we're not quite sure exactly um, what kind of kangaroo it represents, but I'm pretty sure it's a kangaroo. We also found the second block on the same day. Um, it's probably weighing at about 300 to 400 kilograms, this single block on the shore platform, but you can <laughs> see the white bone sticking out there. Um, the unfortunate thing with this block is it'd probably be very easy to go and collect with six or seven people. Um, but the issue with it is that we simply, there's no hint of a skull. Okay. If we're going to collect something, a skull's the thing that you need to be able to tell what the species is above all else. So it's probably a kangaroo. It's most likely a short-faced kangaroo, but again, really hard to tell. That was found by Stephen Kuda as well. Um, so throughout the year, I did a bunch of talks. As you might probably guess, Mornay, I love talking. Absolutely. Adore <laughs> anything else. That's a good thing to Whale evolution. To love, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's intoxicating. You get out in front of the stage and if you know the material really well, it's just, it's so exciting. And especially when you can talk yeah. about things like the evolution of whales and you can tell people for the very first time, did you know that whales walked on land, you know, and, and you see it in their eyes, the same kind of excitement that you had when you found out yeah, that yeah. information for the very first time. And it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's just the best thing ever. For uh, me, I can still remember because that was like, a year or two ago that I discovered yeah. that I was like, what? <laughs> and for the viewers out there, if you're not aware of what we're talking about, 50 million years ago, the ancestor of every single whale that lives today, the biggest creatures that have ever lived, walked on land. They were the size of a Labrador and superficially looks like an otter. They were just super <laughs> duper weird. We found their fossil remains in the Indo-Pakistan region. And yeah, yeah mind blowing material that we've been able to find in the fossil record. Um, it's also super fun talking about the extinction of the megafauna. Oh, we don't really know what killed them off, but yeah, super, super fun to do. Um, get some pictures up of me holding some weird stuff. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I but... love your Instagram photos. They are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are a bit painful at times and the photoshops are really terrible. So I do apologize for that as well. <laughs> but for everyone who's watching right now, what I need is to get out in the field and find what we can, you know, whether it's in Bayside where we're diving down underneath the surface of the water to find the material or we're going into these quarries or along the surf coast. I just need the time to be able to do this. And there is some incredible material that we're constantly finding, you know, uh, in the far left hand image just there is the lower arm bone of one of those giant marsupials we talked about before, Zygomaturus. In the middle, I'm affectionately cradling what could be part of the skeleton of a megalodon, <laughs> which is just unheard of. We, we don't find that kind of material readily in the fossil record. And in the far right, a much younger version of myself from um, a time bygone now, but I've been doing it for a little while, of a tusk from a big twelve of a species that is no longer alive today and is completely new to the fossil record. So going out, consolidating this material, all the specimens that I find makes its way into the state collection so that we can study it. And if you can help us, what you can do is you can go onto my Patreon, A Fool's Experiment, and for five bucks a month, you can help us launch the expeditions and find this material. It is, without a doubt, and 
I don't want to compare the fossil sites because you've got equally amazing fossil sites, Mornay, that you've got to look through and everything. But we've got the biggest predators that have ever existed in the history of the world. That skull that you see next to me there comes from a type of killer sperm whale called Liviatan. And the youngest instances anywhere in the world come right around the corner from Melbourne, where I live. So to be able to find their teeth and their ear bones and everything else, and it may be even evidence of them biting other killer sperm whales. Some really cool stuff. You can go and check it out on my Patreon where you can help us go and rescue the heritage of Melbourne. So if you've got your phone, you can go and QR scan it right now and get it up because we can't do it without your help. What we're looking for is just one day a week in order to go and consolidate this material to talk to the citizen scientists and we're about halfway, we're almost halfway there. So we're looking at about 800 bucks a month, which is, and I, I don't value myself very much, I must admit, because that's less than minimum wage if you do it <laughs> on a per hour basis. But then again, you don't get paid very well if you do paleontology, unfortunately. <laughs> you do it because you love it. <laughs> and I nice. love it. It's the most beautiful, amazing science. And it's one of those sciences where absolutely anyone can make a difference based on what they find on the short platform, based on what they can, you know, w simply walking on the beach. Mm -hmm. And there was this really beautiful story, Mornay, of a seven-year-old girl who was walking the beach down at uh, Ricketts Point, and she mm -hmm. showed me a picture of a tooth that she found that she was about to skim across the water, and it was a baby megalodon tooth. What? I was just like, <laughs> what? It's uh, outrageous. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. just it's just silly stuff. Yeah. So thanks um, for letting me present then and uh, more. I really, really appreciate it. I am super excited to see the material that you found though. I can't wait. And I can't thanks, wait. You can, are you gonna show numerous angles of that penguin concretion again? Yeah, I've got it right behind me. I'll just bring it up to the, the camera. Uh, but uh, before we go to that, I want to say so I'm on your Patreon and I really enjoy uh, the photos you post and the stories you post. So I really recommend checking it out. There's so many things that I see on your Patreon page. And I'm like, hmm, that looks familiar. You know, next time I'll <laughs> yeah. see it, you know, at least I can go look and see what it is. It's really helpful because you've got really good photos of what the fossils look like in situ and then back at the lab. So really enjoying your Patreon page. Um, but thank you, Mornay. This was super fun. Um, please let me know if you ever want to do something like this again, because I love talking. As you know, okay, no, I, but, I um, really enjoyed talking to you, Ben. Awesome. All right, I'll leave you to it, and um, I'll see you on the yep. other side. Ciao. <laughs> Chat soon, Ben. See ya.